Hello, welcome back again. My name is Samuel Amros Onen. You are tutor today for um, um, the model for computation for solving um, algorithmic problems. I built up the model for um, the, the conceptual and, and contextual understanding of algorithm, just to emphasize on how easy uh, algorithm can be designed. When people talk about algorithm, they think of something very huge, big algorithm. But in essence, algorithm is really the way we think, the way we solve problems, the way we move from A to B. It is that simple. But how can we understand algorithm mathematically uh, in order to apply it to be used in the computer system? So I'm here to present a model for solving um, computational problem uh, which is basically algorithm so in the previous video I gave you some demonstration and in this video I'm going to continue with that demonstration but I'm going to kind of like be you know <laughs> be natural if you like I really want to use uh, uh, pen and paper to demonstrate things I know many people have advanced technology you know to uh, to write on board electronic boards and things like that. But for me, I'm still keeping the traditional way of doing things Which is very natural for me. So let us see the summary of this uh, model is very simple uh, Remember the model is a new Equal to B where a is our computational problem and new is the solution to that problem because if any problem exists, there must be a solution to it. But we don't know that solution. But we expect to get something from, uh, from, from the problems. The solution. Because the solution begins at the point where we know the problem. You cannot solve problem without knowing uh, uh, where to begin from. You cannot have the, the solution to the problem without knowing the problem. Otherwise, what are you going to solve? So, that is the reason why we came up with this to be like our input into the system. And once we input this in a system, uh, we need to figure out, we need to do some, uh, some work on A in order to uh, transform A, you know, to become something which will now uh, leave our new as the solution. That's why we say new equal to um, B A transform. Because once we transform A plus the expected output that we want to get, we get the absolute solution to the problem. So in the previous video, I tried to give you some demonstration to show how true is this, <laughs> how true in this. So we assume that A is some problem which exists somewhere in the space. Just think of the space like, uh, like what you're seeing in, in front of you, you know. This is the space. This is the space. What I'm saying, I'm saying in the space. I'm existing in the space. This thing is existing in the space. So the overall space without anything is the whole space. And the instances where things exist on the space, those are the subspaces. So we have some problem in the subspace. And the solution of the problem could be somewhere in, um, uh, in, 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 another, in another subspace. So what we want to get is, is um, now the expected output. What we want to get is the solution to the problem by transforming this A from this space so that we go from problem space to the solution space. And that is our target in this uh, video. Now, we model a, a, a to be like some form of vectors, let's say U, uh, V, uh, W. Vectors, some vectors in the space. The reason, the reason why, we, why we model the problem to be vectors because problem change, problems change with time. They can increase, they can scale up, they can become uh, small, they can be sorted out. So like it's the like vector. Vector. So, so this will be like uh, presented by some kind of R, for example, that could be U and that could be V and the other one could be uh, W. But they exist somewhere in the whole space. So we need to we need to find the solution. The solution exists uh, in form of scalar quantity. In, uh, for example, 
uh, z uh, y x direction if you like so that is the solution because we want to cover the three-dimensional space so our our problem is u v um, w and the solution to this problem is x y z yeah this is a solution but we got the expected the expected output we want we want to get something from uh from this problem and that expected output can be b which could be another vector as well which is uh b1 b2 b3 you know the whole vectors in the space now how are we going to solve this one now let us give them some quantity some values you know after knowing the uh, the existence of the problem in the in the space we want to come up with something to you know to symbolize the problem let's say the problem in the direction of u is um a zero zero uh a zero zero i'm not going to use comma here because i'm now quantifying them and then uh, the problem existing uh in the direction of v is zero let's say a1 a2 zero and the problem existing in the direction of z is zero zero a3 you see and then the solution the suggested you know the absolute solution that we want to find is x y z and the expected output which is b is b1 b2 b3 remember we have we have set this one in the form of this equation a new equals b where new is that one a is that one and our b is that one so now we want to to work out this problem and find out exactly does it exist for real if it does then how can we now solve it if the solution exists then we must find uh, our uh b1 b2 and b3 and then when we plug that one because the solution is x y and z when we plug the solution here and then get the product of this one it must give us b1 b1 b2 and b3 and in that case this equation must be balanced at the end for us to be satisfied that we have got the solution to our problem so let us see how to go about it um let's now use metrics because this is now a metrics now let us multiply them and and get the linear, linear combination of these remember this model is based on uh, linear algebra so we need to find out the linear combination of all these in order to be able to uh, manipulate them and try to uh, work out the solutions so when you multiply this one you get a1x plus zero plus zero equals b1 and then you multiply this one you start from there then you go you get zero plus a2 y plus zero equals to b2 and then you multiply that one again matrix multiplication zero plus zero plus a3 z equals b3 so remember these are different equation one two three so solving them from one we get x equal to b1 divided by a1 and then the second one we get y equals to b2 over a2 and then the third one obviously is this one we get z equals to b3 over a3 now when we plug x y and z there we must get that one exactly so let's see what is going to be the case okay a1 0 0 0 a 2 0 uh 0 0 a 3 yeah we must plug the value of x y which is b 1 over a 1 b 2 over a 2 b 3 over a 3 here is it going to give us b 1 b 2 b 3 is that going to give us that of course <laughs> It will, it will, it will. Let's see, let's see, let's see how it's going to give us. Now, um, multiply this one with that, straight away you get B2. Multiply this one by that, straight away you get B3. Yeah? 
So now is this one the same as B1, B2, B3? <laughs> the answer is true. This is the solution. We have got a solution to our computational problem. So my friend, this is how to think uh, um, um, in, in the computer terms. How to think how to think uh, um, um, in, in the computer terms, how to think, uh, how to design algorithm to solve computational problem. And I hope this video has been informative and I would like to thank you for viewing. I will see you in the next video where we will be exploring yet again the same model to see how we can uh, virtualize this thing, you know, how we can really try to, um, to imagine uh, the problems are happening in real life. So thank you for viewing. I would like you to just go to the next video and uh, you know, continue with your learning. I hope you will get there. So thank you for viewing and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.